In uh, 2007, there was this conference in, uh, in Sibiu, Romania, called the Third European Ecumenical Assembly. So, um, 2,500 church people from all over Europe came to Sibiu. And it soon became obvious that uh, we could never agree on the understanding of baptism. And we could never agree on the understanding of the Eucharist. But what we could agree on was the understanding of climate change and the challenges of climate change. That they, and that they also have with the church to do. Vi holder Tro Økologisk Kirkefestival, og der er til stadighed nogen, der tænker, hvor, hvad har tro og økologi og kirke med hinanden at gøre? Behøver man at være kristen for at tænke på økologi? Var der en, der spurgte mig? Nej, det gør man ikke. Der er så meget, man ikke behøver. Men når kirken holder en økologisk kirkefestival, så er det, fordi vi er i den opfattelse, at det ligger som en del af Bibelen, at vi skal passe på det, vi kalder skaberværket. og så at give os evner. Evner til en enorm produktivitet, så fabrikker kan lave emballage. We have had this morning service for all the four years that we have the, uh, the festival uh, here in, in, in the area. I, I think that we're trying not to, um, to make everything sounds like a catastrophe, but the awareness of environmental issues could also be something that we do out of gratefulness and gratitude for what has been given us. It's just as much as celebrating God's creation and ourselves as a part of it and um, making a morning service here in, in, uh, in the outside. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very good way to do that. The Green Church uh, uh, concept is very uh, practical. And, uh, and, and easy to enter. Uh, any uh, church council uh, can, can start. It is a, a question of the individual uh, church council, uh, uh, the local pastor and, and, uh, and, uh, and the church employees being interested in environmental issues uh, seen in a theological and church perspective. In order to become a green church in Denmark, you have to look through a checklist of 48 points. And these 48 points deals with how your service life is, how you deal with garbage, how you deal with the church's need of transportation, how you deal with recycling, how you deal with the land that uh, is in the possession of the church. And uh, you have to fulfill at least 25 of the 48 points. Here in Kaling, uh, we learned about the Green uh, Churches Network some four years ago and uh, decided to join it. The first thing we did uh, was to install solar panels on the church roof. It, it took some, some time to, uh, to get it because uh, we had to borrow the money. One of the reasons that we succeeded was that the solar panels are hidden and only seen by, like we said, the birds and the Lord. We drink a lot of coffee and we started buying fair trade. We are situated in uh, an old apple yard originally when the church was built in uh, 1979. And most of the trees are cut down, but uh, now we want to uh, have more fruit trees. Also because we are, we are having uh, bees and uh, we want them to have more different kind of food. I had some experience from my work as a kindergarten teacher where we for several years had worked to become a green kindergarten. 
So I, yeah, brought it so I brought it to the Paris Council when I talked about my involvement in the kindergarten to give the parish an insight into how to make it possible. We then contacted the National Council of Churches here and Green Church and received a lot of good material to work with. Children are a big part of our church, so it's quite natural that we wanted to involve them in it. We did so, among other things, in a service where children played a big part when we had become a green church and we should celebrate it. We wanted to plant a tree in the church as a symbolic action so the children could help and get their hands in the earth. In the Sunday school, we have had an entire course around the green church. It has shown that the kids have got great awareness of being a green church, and in a way they know much more than adults. We have a project in our little green art cafe, where we have an exhibit. But we also have a recycling corner, where you can buy clothes and different second-hand things. The money we earn should also go to climate purposes, so therefore we decided that it should go to the purchase of solar panels in Congo at a small hospital where we already have close cooperation on a mission. When you want to become a green church, it's uh, very important to change attitudes, and uh, that concerns both uh, the church council but also everybody who works in the church. And it's important that everybody takes part in the process. Uh, everybody is heard and uh, listened to, and it's a very slow process. But you have to make it slow to make it work. Uh, you can't force it on people. Uh, and we learned that it doesn't work until you slowly change attitude. We also just now uh, participate in the climate pilgrimage uh, going from uh, from the north of, of uh, Scandinavia uh, to uh, to Paris uh, for the for the COP 21. This is the climate pilgrimage pattern we carry. I will put it in my backpack and we will carry it with us. It will then be sent to Paris because later this year at the COP 21 climate conference in Paris. The bottles of water would then highlight that there are many people who walk together and walk for the climate in belief that we can do it better than we do now. We all go for a walk in nature and enjoy the sun and the birds and we get a little peace of mind. When we walk on a pilgrimage, we do it with a purpose. We clear our mind and focus on something special. We also do so this time, so I would like to give you this small flyer, which is the one we are following today on this climate pilgrimage. If you turn the flyer, you will see that there are seven words, and they are slowness, freedom, simplicity, peacefulness, silence, community, and spirituality. I would like each of you to choose one of the seven little words and that is the word that you will think about on the first part of the route. At some point I'll stop our little group and we will exchange words and then think about the other's word the rest of the trip. When I say think, it is not because one must not speak about our children, our men, and all what we talk about when we walk, but try to get it into the conversation, or try to walk quietly and buzz on the words you have. The word is free. So took he them in the arms, he put his hands on them, and he blessed them. We can um, firstly do whatever we can, we can within our churches. Think about how we deal with our energy, think about our transportation needs, but we can also think about how we um, teach children, how we teach adults about the world. So um, we have a task of information and a task also of, of living what we believe in.